This video highlights the brand new debugger pane in LT Design 11.1. Now the debugger pane is a very good event listener, but you can also listen to certain events uh, while applying filters. So you can listen for only things that you're interested in or get a log of darn near anything that's happening with your GUI. Uh, to get to a quick example, we're going to draw a box and group it and give it a small animation like move, um, as you've seen me do in other videos. I can uh, go ahead and change this animation value. All right. Now if I use the debugger to log events, it's going to now start recording that. Right. And already we're getting quite a lot of bit of uh, information gathering from just this simple animation. For example, the timestamp. Right. If I just sit and wait a while, 1804, right, 08, and now it's jumped to 16 because I waited 16, 17, so it's counting up seconds and, and sub-seconds on, uh, on the far right there. It's telling me what animation is changing, telling me the value, and it's actually giving me the number of hits. So in this short amount of time, I've toggled this animation to a different value uh, 1,161 times. And so as I keep jamming on the slider back and forth, it's going to continue counting up and down. All right, uh, That char uh, value is if it matches uh, an ASCII value, it will report the mapped character value too, and that's sometimes handy if you're not concentrating on numeric animations, but you're sending um, numbers to a uh, text I/O on certain characters, like a on-screen keyboard, for example. That would log that event there. So that's just the debugger, very simply, right away. All right. Um, you can actually apply filters to this, uh, and the filters are this other tab here. There's some here that are default to off. That's um, actually GUI events where I had to resize this window and things like that. So those are unchecked by default. Well, notice th all we have here is move, right? Um, let's just make one more object and group it because I'm going to animate it. So I group it first and I'll just call this spin to find zero and then maybe rotate it uh, 359 degrees clockwise. Okay, and I'll call this state 100 um, and define that. And uh, got the, uh, oops, I forgot to hit enter on the, on the state 100 for the rotation. So enter, there we go, redefine that state. And now we've got a spin, okay. Um, and if you notice, the event log is now tracking both spin, all right, and move. So as I change those both, it will track that. Let's just say that I no longer care about move. You can come over here and stop watching move. All right, so as soon as I change this, you'll notice that um, I have it unchecked, but I've not turned on the toggle of apply filters, okay? So you must turn that toggle on before your event log stops spitting out the filtered items, okay? And then if I uncheck apply filters, then move will start populating into the list again, all right? So you can clear the list if you want and um, check all or uncheck all. Uh, there's a recent here. Uh, for example, if you start logging events, you can uh, select from drop downs th the events that are in there. Uh, for example, I'll put both move and spin in there and now it's going to have those. You can pin those to the top once you get a very long list. So those are always at the top and you can even add your own custom values if you want, like hello. All right, so now I'm watching hello. All right, you can use the little watch animation list down here to just create a small watch list. Um, for example, I'll call this watch me. And either press plus or hit enter, okay? And it actually watches watch me for you. So if at any time, logic, your hand, anything changes it, you can always have that down there watching it, right? So that's like event log plus because it's always down there. Further, the events registered in your watch list are yellow in the event log, so it's really cool. So, so far, even though this is a relatively short video so far, I've showed you that you can add, selectively add an items and remove them from the list using filters, specify what goes in the list, add custom items to the watch list, one or more, add custom items to the event log, right, just by uh, typing it in, 
and then of course clear everything out. Now, for Otter Scroll, I want to open a more complicated model. A, to show you the power of the event log when a lot of things are happening, but also to uh, more clearly describe what Auto Scroll will do. So at this point, I think I will go ahead and open a different file. I'll just open this file here. This is a much more larger cluster, and um, I'll start by clearing my list of the old uh, debugger. All right, and I want to just show you that this actually has tons of objects and lots of animations. Um, it's not doing anything right now because this happens to be powered by C code. So it shows you two things at once. Um, you can always run, as we showed in previous videos, pre-compiled C code against LT design at design time. So this is registering or connecting an executable to LT design, and that C code is what's powering the needle movement. Now, notice that the uh, log events is turned on, right? And we're seeing here in the filters that uh, these three are unchecked. Well, watch what happens when I check these. The event log really starts um, getting quite a lot of data because rotate speed, RPM, and fuel are constantly getting updated right here by the C code. So I actually like to uh, filter those out to quiet down the event log, right? But remember, the filters are not active until you click Apply Filters, okay? Now this is a lot more quiet. It removes the mess of the constant updates to speed, RPM, and fuel, and just pops in the little lamp changes and mode switches that might occur when you go from one mode to the next or when you're changing the color of a needle. So definitely use filters on events that might be just noise in your model, all right? But again, if you uncheck Apply Filters, that's the floodgates. Everything is going to come through. So I suggest setting up some filters against your more noisy events and then choosing Apply Filters to quiet that down. Okay. Here's all the new uh, events that highlight this menu. Right. So the menu had a lot of events here. Now I mentioned previously audio, Auto Scroll. This is a very good case to show that when you've got a lot of go going on, uncheck apply filters there's a floodgate of events coming in just uncheck auto scroll you'll see the position of the scroll cursor is moving up but the list is not updating because I told it to stop as soon as you check auto scroll it'll jump back to the bottom and continue down this is good if you just want to see a sequence of events um, for example when it transitions between modes of the screens with the menu up here I could stop and scroll around just that sequence of events that changed that um, that screen from the menu to the to the fuel gauge and back and then when I was done turn on auto scroll again so what I've showed you here is even when you have tons of events coming in you have a way to quiet things down by unchecking the most noisy events applying filters and using auto scroll to tell the debugger when to scroll and when not to scroll alright uh, if if for some reason that you you do want to see uh, rotate speed change, but you don't want it to add it to your list. Well, you can actually say LTA rotate speed as a watch, right? Add that to the watch list and see it going crazy right there, okay? But you don't have to ruin your current list here. So you can add watches to the noisy events, but not put them in your list. Another really good example of why you want one and the other and how you can use them to your advantage, all right? So basically, I've showed you the debugger pane, brand new feature to LTA Design 11.1. You can see it's highly performant, very configurable, and it affords you a lot of access to see exactly what is going on in your GUI.